Brent Rivera, one of the most popular influencers on the planet. Now, I'm assuming you know who he is, but on the off chance that you don't, here's a quick recap. A Viner makes a career off of showing his abs for clout. Vine tumbles and he goes to YouTube to make wildly uh, revealing content for little kids. This content blows up and it keeps getting worse and worse. Now, if you think this is bad, you'd be right. But there are plenty of these people all over YouTube and honestly, anyone with over two brain cells wouldn't watch one of his videos after seeing the thumbnail. But a while back, legendary YouTuber Tyler Oliveira was involved in a controversy regarding Brent Rivera. This is also something that you've almost definitely already seen or at least heard of, but in case you haven't, you should watch the video I've linked below because it's a lot to explain. Basically, there was a hotel incident where Brent Rivera forced him out of the hotel for getting in the way of his content. The problem was that amongst many things such as Brent's clear massive ego, they had both paid to be there. And yet despite this, he was escorted by security from the premise. The video by Tyler showcasing all of this ultimately blew up, making what was already a common hatred amongst YouTuber Brent Rivera an even bigger controversy. Commentary YouTubers such as Danny Gonzalez and Curtis Connor started making videos on it, and it was likely been cancelled to oblivion. This was months ago, and I, like many others, are curious on how he's doing now. And this is where I think the problem lies, because it's as if nothing has changed. He's approaching 30 million subscribers, getting an astonishing amount of views, and deceiving more children than ever. What? But wait, because I had an idea. What about checking his oldest content? Was there a point where he was okay or even tolerable? And if so, when did all that come tumbling down? Well, the first thing I found was his first video. It's only a couple minutes long, so I watched the full thing and it really surprised me. It wasn't overly manufactured. It wasn't highly processed with over the top voiceovers and a cringe inappropriate thumbnail. And most of all, it wasn't fake. It was just a cooking video. Now keep in mind, this was 11 years ago leaving plenty of room between then and now for his content to slowly collapse. So is that what happened? Well, no. Looking at his videos, it was obvious that a switch occurred in his content style around five years ago. Suddenly, he was doing boy-girl videos and was constantly shirtless in all of his thumbnails. The interesting thing is, this all happened right around the time of the Great Vine collapse. I imagine that he lost a major source of fame and income and to counteract it, had to start overly producing his YouTube videos to get back some of the attention he thought he deserved. It kept getting worse and worse, as it always does when this happens on social media. This type of content is like a gold mine, as many creators see a boom in income and revenue, and these videos begin to catch on with very young children, their target demographic. In other words, it worked. I imagine this will only get worse, especially as YouTube becomes an even bigger platform. Hey, if you hear this, you might want to consider subscribing. I'm currently treating this as kind of like a part-time job, so if you want to support that... <laughs>